Good morning, church family, and welcome to this Sunday morning service coming to you through live stream. I just pray that you would uh, be patient with uh, me and Cody as uh, this is our first live stream, so uh, we just ask you to bear with us on that. Uh, getting into our prayer list uh, for this week, we want you to remember Rex and Louise Cashel. I want you to remember Mary Edwards. Kay and Elbert Edge, uh, and Mr. Elbert's going to be having a heart catheterization in Smithfield on this Friday, so please remember him in your prayers. Also, Jim Latza, Miss Merle Johnson, um, Lawrence Dow, and Ron and Sarah Harris. Those are our members that we have on our uh, church list, and at this time, we will go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus, Lord. We just thank you for the, this time together this morning, Lord. We thank you for this technology that we can uh, still bring out the Word of God to our church family, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we just lift up each name that has been mentioned this morning. We just ask for your divine will to be done in each and every one of them's life. And Heavenly Father, you just have your way in this service. And, Lord, we'll be quick to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for all things. And, Heavenly Father, we do pray that we can be back uh, meeting again this first Sunday in April, uh, meeting here with a normal church service, Lord. We, uh, we just praying for that. And, Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. If you are watching this through YouTube, uh, we ask uh, that you please subscribe and click to the bell to know when we post a new video. So please like and share these videos with your friends. All right. This morning's message is coming from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And if you have your Bibles and follow along with me here, in chapter 12, verses 1, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. You know, the Bible says that it, it is impossible to even please God without faith. We come to God by faith. For salvation, we stand for God by faith. We walk with God by faith. We run the Christian race by faith. And one day, glory to God, we're going to fly by faith to New Jerusalem, praise God, when the rapture comes. We're going to have a plain air ride, praise God. Here in chapter 12 of Hebrews, Paul is warning us of the danger of drifting. That is when we are just hears of the word of God and not doers, drifting along, doing nothing at all for the Lord who saved us. Many have fallen by the wayside because of drifting. They get saved, they give a testimony of their salvation, and then they want to just come and sit on a pew. They never maintain a serious Bible study of the word of God. They're like the little girl who kept falling out of the bed. When her mother asked her about it, 
the little girl said, well, I just think I'm stayed too close to the place I got in at. Well, folks, that's what a lot of Christians are doing. They're staying too close to the place where they got saved. We need to move on. We need to pick up God's word and grow and move on. And because we are in a race today. Now think about this. If you were lost in the extreme cold of the North Pole, there's a danger of freezing to death. The first step in that process is you become very sleepy. You'll, you'll fall asleep if you don't keep moving. You have to fight sleep and you have to keep moving or you'll freeze to death. In a spiritual sense, the danger is the same for us as believers. We have to keep ourselves awake. We have to keep ourselves moving. We have to keep ourselves going forward in our relationship with Jesus Christ. If we don't, we start drifting. You know, nowhere in the Bible does it say that the Christian life is going to be easy. There will be times of difficulties. There will be times of trials. They're going to come. We will be tempted. And we will be tempted to the point where we will almost want to throw up our hands and quit and drop out of the race. I'm here to tell you, friend, the devil wants you to quit. I'm here to tell you the devil wants you to drop out of the race. But what we got to do is keep on running the race that God has put before us. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what you're fearing today. I don't know what you're fighting today. But all I'm here to do today is to encourage you to keep on moving and keep on moving in faith. Paul gives us three things that we can do to stay in the race. Number one, he says, consider the saints. Paul draws our attention back to chapter 11, where Hebrews is, in chapter 11, it's called the, the hall of faith. Paul says, these are the great cloud of witnesses that we can draw encouragement from as we run our race. Notice, they have already run their race. They don't uh, run the race they have been, they have run the race they have been given. They didn't run perfectly in, in a lot of cases, but they still ran their race. They did not quit. They did they endured unspeakable pain, unspeakable suffering, but they kept on running, praise God. Notice, they have received their reward. They are in the Father's presence. And this should encourage us to run for the Lord because when our race is over, we will be in the Father's house and receive our reward as well. Notice, they have revealed that God is reliable. That's what these cloud of witness tell us. They, if they could come and speak to us today, they could tell you, you can rely on God's word. You can take it to the bank. God took care of them. God honored their faith. God sustained them, kept them, used them, blessed them for his glory. And he will do the same for you, and he'll do the same for me. God is dependable. He took care of those cloud of witnesses, and he'll take care of you. The second thing Paul points out is we need, we need to make proper preparations for the race. When Paul compares the Christian life to a race, he's not talking about the 100-yard dash. He's talking about a marathon. Verse 1 says, laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Now, while I'm here to tell you, weight is a killer in any kind of race. If you're running a race or whether you're in a race car, you want to be as light as you can because weight is a killer in any race. Well, I'm here to tell you today that sin is a killer in our Christian race, John Wesley's mother told him, whatever weakness you, you have impairs the tenderness of your conscience 
whatever takes your mind off of spiritual things, that thing is sin unto you. So I got to thinking this week when Paul makes that statement, what is the sin that so easily besets us? What exactly is that sin? It might be different for you it, than it would be for me. But I got to thinking, what is the sin that so easily besets us? I tell you what it is, the sin for which you do not want to be repent from. It is the sin that you are so ready to defend. It is the sin for which you find the most excuses for. It is the sin upon which your thoughts run to the most. It is the sin that often darkens your sky. It is the sin that causes a guilty conscience. It is that sin that makes you doubt you've even been saved. The sin that you are most unwilling to acknowledge. The sin you are most unwilling to give up. The sin you always seek to justify. That is the sin that so easily besets us. We must run the race, the race with patience. The race that is set before us. Now each one of us have our own race to run. You can't run my race and I can't run your race. We are not in competition with one, an one another. My job isn't to outrun you and your job is not to outrun me. Our job is to run our race for Jesus Christ. And while we run, we must not look at the other runners. We must keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. We must not look at our circumstances. We must not look at anything that will distract or keep us defeated. We are to keep our eyes on the prize, and that prize is Jesus Christ. The third thing that Paul mentions here, he says, consider the Savior. In verse 2, it says, look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Consider the race that Jesus had. Consider his race. Now, his was a hard race. From being born in a manger in Bethlehem to a, cow, to a cross on Calvary's hill. But let me tell you, he never faltered. He never failed. He never backed up. He never quit. He finished his race. He ran for the joy that was set before him. You say, well, preacher, where is the joy in going to a cross? Where is the joy of dying as a common criminal? Where is the joy in being rejected by people that you love? Well, for Jesus, that joy was the day of redemption that would bring about salvation for every believer. Salvation that was purchased on Calvary's cross. The day sin would be forever destroyed. The day Satan forever banished. The day perfect righteousness would rule in every heart. That's why Jesus ran his race. He was able to look past the cross. He was able to look past the shame. He ran his race with us in mind. He finished his race. He sat down at the Father's throne. Jesus endured to the end so that we might be saved. And he stands as our example. Therefore, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Do you need to be encouraged today to keep on running? Let me challenge you to get your eyes back on Jesus. Stop looking at the other runners. Stop looking at your circumstances. Get rid of all those weights. Get rid of all those besetting sins that hinders us. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep them on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Our God is able to deliver us. And we all like that about Jesus. He is able. But if he doesn't, are, we, are you going to serve him anyway? It's one thing to have faith to escape. It's even better to have faith to endure. 
It's one thing to have faith to be healed. It's another thing not to be healed but still be able to praise God. Let me tell you something. God is sovereign. He knows what's best. He may not always deliver you from trials and tribulations, but if not, we need to praise him anyhow because he's still on the throne. He is still God. We can say hallelujah anyhow. He is still deserves our praise. I believe it was Job that said, even if he slay me, I will still praise him. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's from Romans 8.35. I would like to uh, read some scripture from, from Ecclesiastes that goes along with this, ser this sermon. In chapter 3, verse 1 through 9 of Ecclesiastes, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Folks, there was 28 things in that scripture there when it says there was a time for. But do I want you to notice what there was not a time for. There is never a time to quit. There is never a time to quit. I think about Coach Jimmy V, Jim Valvano, who said, don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. And I thank God that Jesus didn't quit. I thank God that Jesus didn't call 72,000 angels. I thank God that Je Jesus finished what he came he here to do. So keep on pushing. Keep on pressing. Keep on praising. And say hallelujah anyhow. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word today. Amen.